What is up guys? So in this video, I want to show you guys why you shouldn't be wasting your money to buy a really cheap bicycle floor pump. Instead, you should spend just a little bit more to get a really good quality bicycle floor pump. I made the mistake of buying the really cheap one in Walmart. This one is about $15. Um, I bought it because um, when I moved over to New Jersey, I bought a bicycle and I need a floor pump. This is the first one I got and uh, I instantly regretted my decision uh, the moment I went home and started using it. Uh, so I suffered for probably a couple months and finally I went out because I've had enough suffering and bought myself a really good quality floor pump for not even like $30 more, uh, I'm pretty sure this pump is gonna last me a lifetime of use, okay? So on my right hand side, which is on your left, is the Bell Flornado uh, 550 high pressure floor pump. This is $15 from Walmart. And on my left side, which is on your right, is the Topeak Blojo Sport 3. This is their newest version, middle of the line floor pump with four steel construction and a steel base. So in this video, we will just uh, take a overall look at the cheap pump and the good pump and what are the differences and why you shouldn't be wasting your money on a cheap floor pump. Okay, so let's get started. First thing first is obviously the build quality. So for $30 more, you get a full steel barrel, a full steel floor base, and the cheap one only, again, have a very crappy and small plastic base and a aluminum barrel. And this barrel is probably very flimsy as well. Um, the second thing is the, the hose or the air tube. So this one, have a very flimsy air tube that's very thin and actually if you press really hard on the tube over here it actually flexes so if the tube flexes that means the air in here also expands which in turn translates to lost air pressure while you're pumping really hard and this one is a much much thicker tube it's twice the thickness of the cheap tube um, and also if you press really hard on this tube it doesn't flex at all so any tube that doesn't flex means it's going to retain the air pressure much better that which means you're going to pump much more efficiently uh, using the good floor pump okay so that's another difference the third is the actual length of this tube so if you look over here, this one, the Joe Blow, is very nicely designed. It actually smartly put the tube uh, extension in the middle of the pump, so which in turn you can get to a much higher place if you have a large um, tire, for example, like a 29er, and you want to pump the tire with the valves on the top. For the really crappy one, um, it's very short, it's almost impossible for me to reach my 700C tires uh, when it's on the bike. So I always have to put my tire at the bottom and then pump from the bottom area. So that's another difference with the cheap pump. It's, and also, by the way, look at the cheap pump. So when you rest the pump, it's got two, it's got two uh, grooves. So you're supposed to have the tube resting really nicely in two grooves, however, as you can see, it's not even long enough for it to extend uh, to rest the pump here, which you're gonna have a like little dangling uh, valve connector over here, which kind of looks very silly on the cheap pump. On the well-built one, again, it is really well-built. Like the moment you hold the pump, you know it's a good pump. This one actually features a 360 degree rotating hose so you can have the pump whichever angle you like you can have the pump go much higher to reach your bicycle tires that are larger 
and you can go low and you don't have to have the pump so close to your tire if you're still pumping the, the valves on the ground, okay? So that's a huge plus and also look at the design of the pump. You can easily rest it in the groove over here and extend it to the top. That's usually what the pump is designed so like the handle doesn't get pulled out by accident. So that is another difference. Um, the well-built pump features a fully replaceable parts all over. So any parts that breaks down, um, I know Topic have a really great warranty service because I had their hand pump and the hand pump had a broken gauge. I contacted them and they sent me a replacement gauge free of charge um, and asked me just, just kept the broken parts. So I have no doubt that this pump, if something breaks down, I can easily contact Topeak and they should have replacement parts readily available to get anything fixed on the good pump. On the cheap pump, however, it's designed to be disposable. So if you have any parts that breaks down, highly likely you're not gonna get any replaceable parts from Bell because they pretty much have a different design of the pump coming out each year at Walmart. So maybe next year you won't even be able to find this model in the Walmart bicycle section of, of the shelves. Um, so there's that. In terms of replacement parts, you're not going to get much on the really cheap floor pump. So the very last thing is the gauge design. So are actually put up a close up of the of the gauges. So the toe peak have a very large three inch, very easy to read gauge that's metal uh, with a metal needle and the gauge just looks beautiful. It's well designed, full metal gauge with a pressure indicator set. Uh, so there's a little knob you can dial on and set the pressure so it's easy to see. On the cheap pump, the gauge is plastic, the needle is plastic and uh, um, it's pretty much plastic. It also does not have a, um, a pressure indicator for you to set. So if you're pumping your tires, you really have to like look down really carefully to see if you actually reached the desired pressure on your gauge. On the good toe, on the toe peak, and they also raised the gauge up. So it's much easier to read it because it's much closer to you. And with a large dial, it's extremely easy to read. It's a joy to use. And uh, that actually pretty much sums up the difference between the crappy pump and the good pump. And in the next section of the video, we are just going to go uh, pump a few tires on my bicycle and see how quick they can inflate the tires. And I'll also show you why I was so frustrated with this cheap bell pump because the design of the, of, the, uh, of the valve head is just horrendously horrible. It, for 50% to 60% of the time, it doesn't work, okay? That is the reason I went and got the good pump. Okay guys, so now I have one of my backup tire uh, over here. This is 700 by 38. Um, tire uh, which requires a pressure of around 50 to 75 so for this test I'm just gonna try to pump the tire to 75 psi and see how well both of those pumps performs okay this one is a Presta valve and it's actually kind of short so it's a little tricky to get the valve situated especially for the cheap pump and First thing first, you'll notice that the cheap pump, because it's so short, it cannot reach the Presta valve for a proper pumping. The, I have to get the valve somewhere lower in order for me to be able to reach the valve to pump the pressure. Okay, so let's get started. And the cheap pump features, again, dual valve design. So I'm gonna use a Presta valve. Uh, over here, I've already loosened the valve on the on the tire, put the thing in and try to lock it. Now it's in position, I'm going to start pumping. You'll notice that weird sound. The pump is actually not pumping air in there properly. 
it's making such a funny sound and as you can hear it's actually leaking air I have to I have to like play around with the angle just to make sure that the air is not leaking and I have to pump very slowly for it to not get stuck if I pump quick if I'm in a hurry I try to pump quick the air doesn't go in at all which is very silly so I have to pump really slow and really gentle and for maybe 20-30% of the time I'll get the air in the tire um, and so far we are at 35 psi and it's just such a hassle to use it's horrible and also the pumping action is, is very not sleek at all it's like it feels very coarse the pump when I try to pump it just feels coarse this is a cheap pump $15 bell pump as you can see why I'm frustrated by this pump now we are at 60 psi and I'm already sweating because really just to pump one tire that's such huge amount of efforts and now it stopped working again I have to go really gentle and slow just to pray that it would go put some air in there okay now it, it says it's reached 75 psi oh that's quite a workout okay so I absolutely hate this cheap pump it for the most part it just doesn't work and this is for the Priesta valve we can try a Schrader valve in a little bit hopefully it works now it says it's at 75 psi so I'm gonna try it on the better designed pump the Topeak Joe Blow and hopefully it does not disappoint me okay so wow such a beauty just to hold it in the hand um, the good thing as you can see it's got an extra long cable so I can reach the top no problem at all and comfortably, comfortably pump the air with the valve at the top part of the bike um, so let's see I'm gonna get the air out again get it flat All right, so air is all out. I'm gonna set my indicator to 75 and we're gonna start pumping. So to use this valve, you're gonna put the valve, the correct valve in here and you're actually gonna put the lever in the opposite direction to lock the valve. So now the valve is fully locked. We're gonna start pumping. It takes uh, 32 pumps to get to 75 psi and uh, effortless uh, I I did not complain and it just pumps it it goes so smooth really there is no complaint so the only downside I guess for this design or this head is I can there is no air relief so if I over pumped I have to manually let the air out and to take it out is really easy so that is the Topeak Joe Blow Sports 3 uh, for the crappy pump it takes really long time and makes some really weird noise and for the most part you don't really pump air in the bike at all out of curiosity we're gonna pump a Schrader valve again and count how many pumps I need to get to the desired pressure now I'm gonna use the Schrader part of the head 
make sure it's fully recessed and in there and I'm gonna lock it by going the direction opposite of the valve. Thirty three times to seventy five, maybe a few more. Yep, that's over. So thirty three pumps for the Schrader valve on the on my back tire, and we're gonna actually relieve the pressure. We're gonna use the other and try it out. All right, now we try the cheap pump. Again, I cannot reach it. As you can see, it's not low enough. So I have to get it lower. And we're gonna use the Schrader head. Make sure it's fully situated, which it doesn't even want to go in. Uh, it's just horribly designed. Ah, such a hassle. Okay, now let's start pumping and we're gonna count how many pumps needed. Take about 42 times and I'm not even sure if the pressure is right because of the squeaky sound so I'm gonna double check all right so now we are at the end of this test as you guys can see the cheap bell pump works probably 50% of the time and uh, it's horribly designed it's super cheap doesn't reach the top, very hard to use. Um, the Joe Blow from Topeak, uh, excellently designed, very easy ergonomic, quick to use, quick to set up, and faster to pump the tires to the same pressure. And it doesn't make funny noises when you try to pump the tires. Um, and the gauge is much, much easier to read as well. So really no complaints there. This actually sums up uh, this review and hope you guys can see why I highly suggest just spend a little bit extra get a pump that costs you about uh, I would say $40 instead of $15 and you will have much less trouble much less complain and more time spent on the road riding your bike instead of complaining about your pump okay so if you guys have any questions about both of those pumps, the Bell Flornado 550 or the Topeak Joe Blow Sports 3, feel free to ask me in the comments section down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching at this video. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe to my channel and I should have more cycling maintenance tips and videos coming out for you guys, okay? So thanks again and uh, take care.